Hello YouTube, welcome back, Chris here. It's been slow here in the bike shop in Chicagoland. We've got a lot of snow on the ground and not a whole lot's been going on. So I've been pulling out some project bikes out of the attic and taking a look at them to see what we can do with them. This is an older stump jumper that I think you guys are gonna find really interesting. And I wanna get your opinion. Is this a bike that's worth repairing and putting money into, or is it not? So let's go ahead and take a look at what this bike is working with. So let's take a look at this bike. Now while we talk about this, I want to keep a few things in mind. Number one, I'm sure most of the people watching this are pretty handy with bikes. And that's probably how you found this video. If you're online looking up uh, bike rebuilds and uh, bike project stuff, I'm guessing you probably know your way around a bicycle at least a little bit. Most people aren't like that, or a lot of people aren't like that, let's say. So we need to keep in mind that this might not be the project for the everyday person if they don't know a lot about bikes. Because doing the kind of service a bike like this would require will get quite expensive through a bike shop. So we need to really look at it from a perspective of somebody who works on bikes and somebody who doesn't work on bikes. We also should talk about what the end result will be when we're done. Yes, is the work on this bike possible? Absolutely, we can make this thing beautiful again. But at the end of the day, we have to look at what we're going to end up with. Is this bike actually a bike we would want to ride in the end? So let's go ahead and take a closer look at all the parts and everything on this bike and see what it has to offer. Now the bike overall is pretty dirty and it's in rough shape, but this stuff will clean up nice. I'm, I'm really good at cleaning these and getting them looking good again. This is straight out of the attic. It hasn't been touched at all. I didn't even put air in the tires. And this thing's in definitely in rough shape, but it will clean up nice, especially this drivetrain. I can make this look really good. Not too concerned about that kind of stuff. Uh, the drivetrain is an XTR, LX, and XT mix. So it was all really nice quality stuff back in its day. It's obviously got some miles on it and some age on it, but really nice stuff and uh, nothing that I'd be too concerned with. First thing that I'm a little concerned with with this bike is the brakes. I believe these are the first, if not one of the first generations of Shimano Dior XT hydraulic brakes. These are quite difficult to work on. I have bled them before, but parts for these are gonna be pretty darn hard to find. Reliability on a brake like this is gonna be pretty bad nowadays. And you're talking older brake lines, you're talking reservoirs that have a seal on the top that may or may not be good. Personally, if I were going to fix this bike up for myself, and especially if I was going to actually trail ride on it, I'd be replacing these brakes. Um, I just think it's a better way to go. If you, even if I can get them to bleed up and work just fine, this one's totally flat right now. This one has a little bit of pressure, but it's super spongy. But even if I was able to get these working, I wouldn't really trust them for the long haul. I feel like I'd have an issue with these over time. Uh, also, I should mention, brake pads are in pretty rough shape as well. But it is pretty cool these are four piston brakes. Even on newer brakes that's kind of uncommon unless you go to really high end stuff. So for this day and age, that's pretty awesome to see. So again, let's talk about somebody who knows how to work on their own bikes. Putting a pair of brakes on this would not be a huge deal. Uh, I would guess if you wanted to go the inexpensive route, you could probably get a set of brakes for under $100 and just put them on there and be good to go. If you wanted to make it real nice, you know, maybe spend a couple hundred bucks on some nicer brakes, install them yourself, probably wouldn't make or break the bike in my opinion. The bigger concern for me is going to be the suspension. Here we have an older RockShox Judy. Although this was a nice fork in its day, it's got age on it and forks don't always age well. Now I don't know the condition of this fork, I haven't really looked at it too closely. Um, a lot of people, even ones that are pretty handy with bikes, don't service their own forks. And the ones that do, you have to be able to find parts. Now, I'm sure you could probably find seals for this, but as time goes on, they're going to get harder and harder to find. So it's not going to be super future-proof to get seals for this fork, even if you can rebuild it. I know a lot of services that do rebuild forks and a lot of shops that do rebuild forks probably won't do anything of this age. Um, just because of how old it is, it's hard to get parts for. In the back here, we have a Fox Float RC. Also got some age on it. And same story there. You probably can find seals. I don't know how many years you're going to be able to find them for. And you're definitely going to need someone to install them if you can't do it yourself. So those are definitely going to hold up somebody who doesn't work on bikes at all quite a bit. Um, if your suspension's blown, this base bike is basically garbage unless you can get it fixed. For someone who does work on their own stuff, that might not scare you as much. I don't know. Personally, for me, that's a deal breaker. I wouldn't want to own this bike because that would make it too difficult for me to make sure I could have this bike running well for years and years to come, at least as a bike I would actually ride. Now over on this side of the shop, I have another bike. 
This is of a similar age. It's maybe a little bit newer. Um, well, it's definitely a little bit newer. But I did some pretty heavy work on this one. This was also in the attic, and it was in really rough shape when I pulled it out. I, I replaced some parts. I put a new cassette on it. I put a new chain on it. I replaced the tires, and I even had these wheels laying around that were takeoff from something else. The wheels that were on the bike were in terrible shape. Drive frame was really rusted up. I was able to clean up the rest of it pretty good and make it look nice. And uh, this is a bike that I'm selling. Now this one I made the decision that it was worth doing because I can make it turn out something a little bit nicer. And I think it's a little more future proof. A couple differences with this rock hopper, it's got V-brakes. Now I know they're not the greatest brakes on earth, but I guarantee you that you'll be able to service these brakes long after I'm dead. Those uh, hydraulic discs, not so much. It does have a suspension fork. Like I said, it's a little bit newer generation here. That is one thing to be concerned with, but it was in nice shape, so I wasn't too worried about it. And uh, that could be replaced fairly easily if you had to, where a rear suspension would be a little trickier. So sometimes it does make sense, and that's why I'm kind of looking for advice on this one. Now let's talk about the end results. So let's say we did go through with all the work on the bike. We put some new brakes on it, made sure the suspension was good, maybe had uh, the fork and the uh, rear shock rebuilt. Um, what would you do with the bike? You know, this is a 26 inch wheel mountain bike. Personally, it's nothing I would want to trail ride. I could trail ride it, but I wouldn't make it my regular trail bike. Um, a younger person who maybe doesn't have a lot of money might, might find this as a really good trail bike. And it is a perfectly fine trail bike. Um, but that's kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people is having those older, smaller wheels. You know, it's also kind of dated in the drivetrain. It's a three by, um, should be nine in the back. Yeah, three by nine. So, you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't doing that nowadays. And so now you're talking a whole drivetrain swap, you know, drivetrain, brakes, suspension. At this point, you're probably better off buying a new bike or getting something a little bit newer in a used bike. So that's where I kind of run into trouble here is do I want to put a few hundred dollars in this thing to make it nice and try to find a customer who would actually use it as a trail bike? You know, to get it fixed up for that money to sell it for someone to ride on the bike path, eh, I don't know that it's going to sell very well. It's going to be a little tougher to do. So I want to hear what you guys would do. Would you actually ride this? Would you put the money in it? Um, what do you think? So leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And we'll see what, what we do with this bike in the future. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'm going to do more videos just like this in the future.